get started. Uh, my name is Frank Menger. I'm an assistant uh, professor of neuroradiology at uh, Yale uh, Department of Radiology in the School of Medicine. I'm very excited that for all of you joining here today, uh, including the residents and faculty in the audience, and also an online uh, audience on Facebook. Uh, I wish I could actually see you and like wave hello. But this is really like new territory, actually speaking to an audience that's both uh, here and also uh, elsewhere. And uh, we do have a residence, and our, one of our resident, uh, uh, Crystal from Jamaica, is going to join us uh, later. So all of you, welcome. I'm very, very excited for this opportunity to share with you a little bit of the work that our department has been doing in terms of like global outreach. So we're going to travel today a little bit away from New Haven. We're going to cross the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to end up in Africa on the East Coast. Specifically, we're going to be spending some time talking about the work we're doing in Tanzania, which is right here where the arrow is. And specifically, that work has been in Dar es Salaam, which is the commercial capital of uh, Tanzania. Uh, Dodoma is actually the, the government uh, capital of Tanzania. I really uh, behoove uh, anybody who hasn't really uh, had a chance to uh, look up Tanzania. There's a lot of like major attractions uh, in terms of tourism that I would really uh, want all of you guys to take a chance to take, uh, take a look at and one of my residents kind of touch a little bit on that. So in Dar es Salaam, uh, which is the commercial capital, it has about like, five to six million people. It's uh, really one of the most populated uh, places uh, in uh, Tanzania. And so we're going to be spending time actually at the Muimbili National Hospital. So in Tanzania, we have a referral system. So when a patient gets sick, this is really the highest level of care that you can get in the country. So Muimbili National Hospital is really the uh, national hospital. We also spend time at the Muimbili Orthopedic Institute, and that is really where our program is based. And there's also like a medical school here called uh, Muhas. And basically, we kind of like rotate through uh, these uh, three institutions that actually housed in one uh, campus. So what is the problem that we're trying to address here? So just to kind of put it in perspective, uh, radiology is a very, very young specialty in Tanzania. So we really didn't pick up our residency training program until the early 2000s. So, and because of that, really, we're kind of stuck around 50 to 60 radiologists total in the entire country. And that's to kind of put it in perspective for our residents and faculty, we have more res I mean, radiologists in our department than the entire country of Tanzania. And so it's kind of hard to believe, but that is really the reality that we have right now. So the numbers that we actually presented at a conference uh, back in 2016, we had 50 trained radiologists in Tanzania. And now the number is close to 50 or, I mean, 60 or 70 uh, radiologists. So really the, the problem is uh, really immense, but this is not really anything unique to Tanzania. Uh, it's uh, really the uh, problem of pretty much uh, most uh, underdeveloped uh, nations in that basically one radiologist is a young specialty and there's a great need for uh, specialty uh, training. So that is basically the, the background in which we are so like, you know, set. So if you look at that number, we probably have almost as many residents in our training program as we have actually for the entire nation of Tanzania, which is about like 60 million people. So what is the opportunity? The opportunity really what I see uh, moving forward is to support resident, uh, radiology resident training in Tanzania. And that's really one of my personal goals. And I hope that we can accomplish this sometime before I retire, which is going to be somewhere in 2040. So just to kind of like, you know, put this in perspective, what we're trying to do is both double the number and quality of radiologists. So it doesn't really help if we double the number of uh, radiologists, but we do not provide them with quality training. And that is really what I believe our department and uh, anybody who's sort of like listening to us can really help us contribute to that. Basically make sure they have the best educational training uh, uh, moving forward. And not only that, the earliest radiologists we train are very critical because they're going to support the training of all the other residents after that. So really the next five to 10 years are going to be really critical. And I'm happy to report that actually right now we are actually on target to reach 100 radiologists by the year 2020. So, so we're on target and if we continue on this trajectory, basically sometime between uh, 2035 and 2040, we're going to hit the magic number, which in my opinion is around 1,000 radiologists in Tanzania. Um, you know, that's just like a random number, but I really believe at some point when we have 100, 1,000 radiologists within Tanzania, uh, we're going to basically hit a critical mass, and that's basically going to have a life uh, of its own. But really, uh, what the charge here uh, after today is to kind of like explain that we can hopefully even speed up this uh, pace that we have. Because basically, if we wait until 2035 to actually reach the 1,000 radiologists, Tanzania's population is actually pegged to be about 100 million people. So we'll still be sort of like behind the eight ball. 
So for the faculty, I'll just pitch this again. Uh, our department has been immensely supportive uh, uh, towards this effort, and actually now it's matching us both with time commitment and also allowed expenses for the faculty staff account. So for 10 uh, days of resident supervision and instruction, which basically boils down to like two weeks of Monday to Friday supervision and instruction, you can use five of vacation days and the department is gonna match with five CME or academic days. And for those more senior faculty, they can actually even use their training time towards this particular effort. And, uh, and uh, for the expenses, the flights that we typically go through Dubai and that uh, is approximately 1,000 to $1,200, uh, uh, basically JFK to Dar es Salaam back to JFK. And the housing is approximately 50 uh, to $100 a day. So in total from the faculty's expense, uh, it's uh, less than $2,000 uh, for, for this really uh, awesome uh, experience. And we do have these dates already set. These dates are actually pegged to the resident uh, uh, block uh, schedule and it actually fits the residency uh, training in Tanzania. So it ends up being like a perfect sort of like match when we go in February and March and October and uh, November. And so we already have faculty signed up, uh, thankfully through 2018. And so we're looking for faculty to join us for 2019 and uh, 2020. So the dates are gonna be available online and elsewhere uh, for faculty to uh, plan and also residents to, to join us as well. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Kennedy Foyang, who's going to kind of take us to his experience where he was in Tanzania the last uh, 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 trip in uh, November, and he spent uh, four weeks there. He's going to share the resident experience. After that, uh, Fabian is going to share his experience with me where he spent two weeks talking about interventional radiology, and then we'll like, circle back uh, to other experiences within our global outreach program. So my talk is titled uh, Radiology Global Outreach in Tanzania. So in the next 15 minutes or so, I'd like to share my experience with you on my one month elective in Tanzania. The talk itself is broken down into five main sections. Uh, in the introduction, I'll start with how, you know, the, the journey to Tanzania, and then that'll be followed by just giving you an idea of what it is like living in, in Dar es Salaam. And I'll share with you the main projects we, we, uh, we, we accomplished while we were in Tanzania. And then that'll be followed by a few interesting cases. And I'll run through some things you can do, fun things you can do over the weekends while, being, while in Tanzania. And then we'll conclude by um, telling you how you can get involved in all this. So um, as uh, Dr. Minja alluded to, the rotations are typically held in the months of February and in October and November. Um, I was part of the November session. Uh, for the rotations, we, we fly out via JFK. So from JFK, we have a stopover, in, a stopover in Dubai. And then from Dubai, we fly to Dar es Salaam. So I show you an image of one of the main attractions in Dubai. This is uh, the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the wall, and it was something I got an opportunity to see. Uh, just interesting enough, uh, we, we found out while at the airport that you can actually request your own Uber chopper, chopper while in Dubai, and it was something we obviously immediately tried. I know Fabian and I tried this, and in this case, there was no Uber chopper available for us. <laughs> All right, so getting to Dar es Salaam, uh, the airports could be a little bit hectic. It's a busy airport, there are long lines. All right, but the good news is the climate it's excellent, it contrasts the cold climate uh, we have here in the U.S. Uh, it's a typically a tropical climate and the weather stays mildly warm for the most part. Uh, most people in Dar es Salaam, um, oh, the official language spoken is Swahili, however, uh, most people speak English and you can interact with anybody. So uh, once we got to that, we were lodged in uh, Abbott House. <laughs> Uh, which is a remodeled apartment uh, in the grounds of the main national hospital. It's located approximately five minutes from the radiology department, so it's a walking distance to, to the radiology department. Uh, it comes fully equipped. You have everything you need in, in a normal house. It's very comfortable. You've got air conditioning. You've got uh, an entertainment system. You've got you know nice clean water, and you've got a uh, computer section. There's free Wi-Fi in the house. We have a washing machine and you know a, a well-equipped kitchen. We even had a maid that comes and helps us with uh, doing our laundry, so that, that was nice to have. All right, <laughs> so people in Tanzania obviously are very friendly. I, uh, everywhere we go, people were really welcoming. I show you a picture of the waterfront, which is one of my favorite spots to hang out, and you know the sunset at the waterfront is something incredible. You, you, should, you should, something to look forward to. And here I'm having, you know, sorry, I'm having, um, um, dinner with the residents um, and, you know, stay at the waterfront. And this is a random invitation to uh, a wedding. Uh, one of the attendings had a wedding and I was randomly invited. And then here we have uh, just having dinner with one of the attendings at the house. So people really just inviting and welcoming and warm. 
All right, speaking of food, uh, there's more variety than you typically think. Um, there, there's a local Tanzanian cuisine, which is very cheap, and you know your dollar is strong now, and it goes very far. Uh, this, in, there are influences from other parts of Africa. You have lots of uh, food from other parts of East Africa. You have influences from the expat population from India. So there's something for everybody. So let's proceed to the projects in uh, the main teaching hospital. So I had, you know, we had four main projects to accomplish. Uh, the big project for our first two weeks was the, was doing a readiness assessment for interventional radiology. That's something Fabian will talk about extensively. Uh, my main focus was uh, teaching radiology, and I taught radiology to the radiology residents, to the emergency medicine residents, and to the emergency medicine nurses. Another focus was providing consultation to other services. And in addition to that, I was constantly scouting out for research opportunities and uh, looking for interesting cases. So this is what your typical daily schedule as a resident will look like. Uh, the day begins at 7.30. We have conference. Uh, we have like conference or grand rounds going from 7.30 to 8.30. And then at 8.30, we have a short break for breakfast. And then for about 9 o'clock, we, we move to the reading room where we spend about four hours with uh, you know, other, attending, other uh, radiology attendings as well as residents. And then we break for lunch, which is sort of a social hour between 12 and 1. And then right after that, we go. We have a didactic session with the residents, which goes from 1 to 4. Obviously, this schedule will change on it, uh, depending on you know, uh, what we have going on on the day. Sometimes we have meetings that we have to, um, to go to those. So my, uh, the lectures I gave were to three main uh, uh, groups of individuals. I gave lectures to the radiology residents. Uh, I gave lectures to the emergency medicine residents and the emergency medicine nurses. And uh, the topics we covered spanned a wide spectrum. Uh, of note, the topics were mostly resident-driven. The residents would give me the input on what they wanted me to teach them, and I'll go back and prepare a lecture and come and give them a lecture. Uh, just to, to uh, highlight, throw some, some highlights here, uh, most of the lectures we gave were e emergency medicine-based type lectures, and I also taught them some um, ways to approach MRI, MRI sequence recognition, and then how to approach brain, head and neck, and spine tumors amongst others. So I showed an image here of me teaching the residents. Uh, this is the radiology residents I'm teaching. And then the second image, the image at the bottom is me teaching uh, the emergency medicine residents. So uh, one thing which, which was noticeable was that uh, the residents had uh, limited experience with cross-sectional imaging. And this was something we attributed to the lack of uh, time spent on the workstation. I mean, we take for granted at Yale, every resident has a workstation and can rapidly go through cases and you get lots of teaching that way. But in Tanzania, sometimes you don't have enough workstations. So we have here uh, two or three senior residents on that workstation, and I'm working, I'm teaching them. So to overcome this hurdle, what we did in the short term is that we, uh, we had a, an open source version of uh, PAX Play Canvas, which we installed on their laptops. So I'll typically retrieve images from the PAX and then I'll and the anonymize them, and I'll use those imagey, uh, images to teach the residents. So it sort of gives them a simulation of what it feels like going through cases and making diagnosis. Now the long-term fix for this is to um, have more workstations installed at a newly uh, constructed hospital. I think Fabian will show you some pictures of this hospital. It's called Loganzilla. All right, so uh, something which I noticed which was different here was there are some cultural differences that exist with, with teaching. You know, unlike here in the United States, the residents don't readily take cases, so um, it's somewhat difficult to get immediate feedback from the residents. In this solution, uh, the app Poll Everywhere really shown. Was through using Poll Everywhere, we're able to get the residents to, to participate in the lectures. I know when I put up images, the residents go right ahead and throw arrows on these images. And, you know, so it was very interactive and, and our lectures became more fun. Another thing which was important was staying connected to the residents. And uh, once we got there, the first thing we did was immediately get on the WhatsApp group with the residents. So I could sort of start a chat with the residents and I get feedback on what they want me to, to lecture. And then you know, I get a lecture prepared and I can you know, upload those lectures in WhatsApp. And then we can do the lecture. And after the lecture, I still get feedback from the residents. So, um, you know, WhatsApp was really good at doing that. And then something else which is quite important is that the whole concept of lecture sharing. To put it in, to give you an idea, the residents don't really get constant lectures from attendings. So sometimes the, the residents have to prepare lectures for each other. So in this case, something like lecture sharing really um, enhances the quality of education they get. They get. 
uh, you know, they get the opportunity to listen to lectures from our renowned faculty here at Yale, which uh, definitely is something that they look forward to. And then something else we tried to do was uh, installing Zoom on their, just a free version of Zoom on their laptops, because now the residents have two campuses and they'll need to communicate between those two campuses. And so Zoom was something we installed on, on their laptops. Uh, in addition to teaching radiology residents, I also taught emergency medicine residents. And the reason for this is that the emergency medicine residents and nurses triage cases in the setting of trauma. So, you know, they would give me an idea of, you know, relevant topics they needed, and I would go and prepare a lecture, and I will deliver these lectures to them. And for the nurses, I sort of introduced them to the gross concept of imaging and you know, how to look at um, certain things like chess films, and, and I gave them an intro to ultrasound. And I uh, introduced this concept of task shifting, which is something a uh, few people will do work in low resource and low uh, workforce areas will tell you could be helpful, which is teaching radiology to non-radiology folks. And you know, uh, the reason being that you know, these, these individuals triage the cases, and in some cases they can use that information to triage these cases and even, and even save lives. So I have an, a link here for where you can go to read more about that. All right, in addition to teaching the residents, we provided consultation to other services. And um, we, uh, would, uh, the way that was done was uh, during our morning rounds, we had rounds on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with neurosurgery. And then on Tuesdays, we had rounds with orthopedics. We'd, you know, uh, give our opinion on cases and, and uh, uh, you know, get feedback from them. Another way we provided consultation was uh, in the reading rooms. Other services readily would walk in, just like here in the United States, they'll come into the reading rooms and get opinions from us. They'll bring cases in and we'll look at those cases and we'll render diagnosis. All right. So I'll show you just a few interesting cases just to give you an idea of what it is like or what the type of cases we were seeing in Tanzania. So um, this is a single slide from a young infant. This is a young infant with no um, history. I show you a, a surgical section, a T2 surgical section of the brain, and, uh, and obviously this is AB normal. Uh, part of the brain is out of the skull. This was the case of a young infant with an isolated encephalocele. And uh, this is the second case of another young infant with uh, areas of uh, rib enhancement and necrosis. There's this large mass in the brain causing a, a left-sided uh, shift. And uh, uh, we thought this was a very aggressive tumor. And the leading diagnosis here was a PNET. And this is another case, a coronal CT of a young male. He has this large disfiguring mass in the right jaw. Uh, this infant, this uh, male was being treated, this was being treated as a dental hemangioma, and this child got sclerotherapy. That's the fun things to do. So just like uh, Frank mentioned, uh, there are lots of things to do in Tanzania. Tanzania is a very tourist, uh, has many attractions for you. So, uh, typically on a weekend, one of the things you could do is go to the neighboring island of uh, Zanzibar. Uh, it's about a two-hour ferry ride, or about a 30-minute uh, uh, plane ride, and it's it's known for its beautiful beaches. Um, and in addition to that, you can also visit uh, some stone stone uh, stone town, which is a very old town, and in, it's state preserved and it's something to see. Uh, Zanzibar also has other exotic things like the spice farms, which you can visit while you're there. Now, depending on your time and your budget, uh, you can travel up north to some of uh, the uh, safaris in Tanzania. In this case, I traveled to Arusha, to Ngorongoro, and this is my flight to Ngorongoro. And as you can see, I just catch a glimpse of uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the tallest or uh, the highest peak in Africa. Uh, once I got there, you know, uh, Ngorongoro craters. Uh, very extensive, um, you know, just, uh, sink, land sink with just uh, an incredible array of animals. You can see uh, pits of uh, hippopotamus and just other animals. And if you go at the right time, you can actually meet flamingos. Uh, and I know there have been documentaries about those flamingos. So, so um, how do you how do you get involved in all this? So, for the attendees, we'd like for you to continue the lecture sharing. Uh, for the residents, you just by taking part in the in the away elective is one way to get involved, and you know you can um, also help your co-residents you know, with traveling uh, to Tanzania. And then um, another way everyone could be helpful is funding travel for those who are traveling to Tanzania. So in conclusion, uh, Tanzania is a fun and safe place to live and work. Uh, the infrastructure and facilities are present. 
sustainable impact comes from capacity building, and you can make you can provide immediate and lasting impact. Thank you very much. All right. So I'm just going to introduce uh, Fabian to uh, come and talk to you guys about interventional radiology in Tanzania. Thank you. So yeah, I'm Fabian. I'm a second year radiology resident here at Yale, and I'll be talking about interventional radiology in Tanzania. Um, like Frank mentioned earlier, there are about 50 to 60 radiologists in Tanzania right now. Uh, for intervention, we have even more accurate numbers, and the number is zero, unfortunately. There's not a single interventional radiologist in the, in the whole nation. Uh, so that's uh, as if there was not a single interventional radiologist in California, which is pretty hard to imagine. So how do you, how do you assess interventional radiology in a place with no interventional radiology? Uh, I don't know if there's a perfect way, but um, this is what we did. Um, so we assessed uh, facilities and equipment, then tried to identify key personnel, um, assess the case spectrum and needs, and then try to develop a long-term plan for interventional radiology in Tanzania. As for uh, the facilities, like Frank said, there's a, a number of hospitals which are sort of all on the same campus. So one is M&H. Here there are four ultrasound units. There's a CRM floor. There's an MRI, a 128 slice CT, uh, which you can see here on this image. Um, at Mumbili Orthopedic Institute, there are two floor units, two ultrasound units, and they're planning to build an Andrew suite uh, over the next couple of years. Next door at the Cardiac Institute, there's a biplan Andrew suite, which is already in use, uh, which you see uh, depicted here. And then there is MUHAS, uh, which Ken mentioned earlier. It's the new uh, teaching hospital just outside of town. It's a state-of-the-art hospital. Uh, it actually just opened last month. Um, so here they basically have um, all state-of-the-art facilities, including uh, ultrasound, fluoro, MRI, 64 slice CT, uh, which we can see here. And they have an Andrew room, but there's no equipment in the room yet. So it's, uh, at this point, it's just a sign, but they're planning to equip it over the next uh, one to two years. As for key personnel, like I said, there's uh, no specialty training and no IR faculty or trainees in Tanzania at this point. However, there's a large residency program as we heard. So this year alone, there's uh, 25 new residents. And among those residents, there are some which are uh, very interested in interventional radiology. And also among faculty, there's uh, uh, excitement about IR and they, they want to learn about it. But at this point, the only ones actually doing procedures that are somewhat related to interventional radiology are the pathologists who are performing fine needle aspirations of uh, lung, liver, et cetera. And there has been a visiting team from Kenya consisting of one interventional radiologist and an IR technician who came to um, Tanzania twice, uh, I think two times for, for a weekend basically and did a bunch of procedures. As for the case spectrum it needs, so the, the need is huge. Um, basically, IR could provide useful procedures for literally every department in the hospital. So I just uh, wanted to highlight a few, a few patient groups that would really uh, benefit from this. One is um, uh, pediatric patients with hemangioma. So they're, they're um, you know, they sometimes have huge lesions. They used to be referred to India uh, for treatment. This costs about $30,000 per patient. And uh, the new administration is no longer doing that. Um, so there's been some political changes. They're no longer sending kids to India for treatment. So now they're uh, in Tanzania and there's no one that can do sclerotherapy uh, to treat them. Um, so they would benefit immediately. Also like any general surgery or medicine patient with for example, perforated appendicitis with a deep pelvic abscess currently needs to go undergo laparotomy and a surgical washout. Uh, instead, IR could just put a drain in, which is a lot less invasive. Then, of course, there's a huge uh, trauma population in Dar es Salaam. One, one thing IR could provide, for example, splenic artery embolization instead of doing splenectomy. Then neurology and neurosurgery patients obviously would uh, benefit from clot retrieval or calling of uh, uh, intracranial aneurysms, which currently no one can do in Tanzania. And then uh, oncology patients would benefit from simple things just as uh, corneal biopsy. So currently there's only FNA. So even just bringing corneal biopsy uh, there would be amazing. And then, of course, uh, going forward, ablation and chemoembolization of tumors um, would, be, would be very beneficial. Now coming to the last point, development of a long-term plan for interventional radiology in Tanzania. So this is how we uh, sort of uh, thought of it. There's uh, three main aspects. One is training of residents. The other is training of nurses and technicians. And the last is uh, facilities and equipment. And uh, I think that all three are equally important. You cannot um, do one without the other. 
Um, as for training of nurses and technicians, that's really uh, essential. As we know, you cannot run uh, an IR room without having trained nurses and technicians there. You can't do it by yourself. Um, also, facilities and equipment, of course, uh, need, to be, um, need to be adequate. But I'm going to speak uh, mostly about the training of residents now. So uh, here's our plan. Um, we're, we're hoping to send 10 IR faculty there per year for th at least three years, and not just from Yale, but from all over the US. Um, also, we're um, working on providing study resources to the uh, residents in Tanzania. Like Ken already mentioned, one part of that is uh, a streaming of lectures to Tanzania. So we're hoping to, going forward, also stream more, of, uh, more IR lectures to Tanzania. Then another aspect is going to be providing IR observerships and research opportunities for Tanzanian residents who want to come to the U.S. in order to be exposed to, um, you know, just what a, what a Western um, IR department looks like. And uh, the uh, overarching goal to sort of tie everything together is uh, going to be establishment of a competency-based IR curriculum. And we think this is really the way to guarantee um, a self-sustaining IR training program in, in Tanzania. Now, as for the practical training schedule, this is sort of just a rough outline um, over the next three years, what we, what we hope to accomplish. So now, starting over the next year, we want to provide procedures that can be done immediately, where we basically already have all the imaging facilities in place. Then um, the year after, move on to more advanced percutaneous procedures and some basic vascular procedures. And then in 2020, we hope to ac accomplish or, or start doing um, some interventional oncology and uh, neurointerventional procedures. So just a couple of examples here. Phase one inc would include core needle biopsy, uh, sclerotherapy for hemangioma, as I mentioned, fallopian tube recanalization, aspiration and drainage of abscesses, cholecystostomy tube placement, nephrostomies, and arthrograms. Then in 2019, we hope to um, provide gastrostomies, jejunostomies, central lines, IVC filters, and some, some basic diagnostic angiograms. And then by 2020, we hope to provide GI bleed embolization, traumatic hemorrhage embolization, thrombolysis for PE, clot retrieval and stroke, coiling of intracranial aneurysms, uterine artery embolization, and then a chemo embolization for um, liver tumors, for example. The good news is that some of these um, procedures um, are already happening right now. So while we were there, we were um, doing CT-guided biopsies. Um, so this is uh, Frank, Ken, and I with uh, three of the Tanzanian residents who want to go into interventional radiology. Uh, Aza over here, uh, Ivan, and Eric. And uh, Eric is holding a, a CT biopsy grid, which we um, made from chicken wire while we were there because they didn't have a biopsy grid, and it worked really well. Um, here you have the same three residents um, performing a nephrostomy tube placement under a guidance of the, the team that was visiting from Kenya and uh, that also provided the, um, the tube. Um, and uh, Ivan, by the way, is from neighboring uh, Rwanda and he came to Tanzania specifically because he was hoping that there he would have a higher chance of uh, learning about interventional radiology. And here, um, this is um, the, the interventional radiologist from Kenya performing sclerotherapy in the uh, operating room. And um, as you can see, there's a huge interest. Um, everyone wants to learn about IR, and uh, people are excited about it. Now, if you're an interventional radiologist, this is what the schedule would look like. Um, so you, you fly there, someone picks you up at the airport, show, shows you where you live, gives you a little uh, orientation around the hospital, and introduces you to the people you'll be working with. And then the regular Monday to Friday schedule would consist of morning rounds with a discussion of the planned procedures for the day. Um, then, of course, doing as many cases as possible and um, doing resin teaching while doing the cases. And if there's time in between cases, um, you could give some, some lectures to the residents about interventional radiology. Um, on the middle weekend, there would be time for a trip to uh, Zanzibar, like, like Ken explained, or another destination of your choice. The second week would be exactly like the first week, just with uh, morning rounds cases and resident teaching. And the last day would be reserved for a review of interests and cases and discussion of progress, accomplishments, and problems that uh, occurred during this uh, rotation. And uh, then someone would take you back to the airport. Uh, in terms of financing, so Frank already mentioned some numbers. A round trip ticket is around $1,000 to $1,200. Uh, housing is around $75 a night. So if we want to send 10 groups per year, that's a bit over $20,000. And for three years, that's around sixty dollars to $70,000. Uh, 
Um, so it, it is a bit of money, but uh, considering that this may help introduce a whole new specialty to a country, I think it's a, it's a fair price. And here are the avenues of, of funding this. So like Fran mentioned, um, Yale has been extremely uh, generous and they're um, helping with uh, flight tickets and housing. Also, um, Professor Musser from um, from M and H in Tanzania um, um, has offered to provide housing and to pay for Tanzanian residents who want to come to the U.S. for observerships. But um, if we want to recruit um, our faculty from other institutions in the U.S., we cannot rely on their institutions being equally helpful. So we have to find other ways of funding. And uh, two options would be uh, applying for grants and donations. In conclusion, I believe that IR can become an important clinical specialty in Tanzania, and um, most relevant facilities are already available at this point, and all missing equipment uh, can be obtained. So we're, we're on the right track. Every IR attending or fellow from the US can have immediate impact. So if, you're, if this is something you would consider, I really urge you to do it. Uh, first of all, you're gonna have a great time, and uh, second of all, um, you can really make a difference. And the, the residents that you train there are then going to go out to across the country and neighboring countries and teach other people. So it's really going to make a difference. Um, but in order to have sustainable um, IR services and a self-sustaining residency program there, uh, we need to uh, develop a competency-based curriculum. All right. So I'm going to hand off to Crystal now, who will be joining us live from Jamaica. Good afternoon, Anne. <laughs> Hi everyone, we're very happy to be with you today. Those are great talks and I really enjoyed them. We just wanted to talk a little bit about what we've been doing here in Jamaica. And I'm Crystal Buchanan, a fourth year radiology resident, and we've been an active uh, member of Global Outreach um, at Yale. This time we're here doing workshops with the residents and with the technologists, pretty much teaching day-to-day -day, um, workflow. Now, I wanted to just talk about a few activities that we've been doing. So pretty much every year, we've been traveling to Eastern Jamaica, and like I said, training technologists and radiology residents. But one thing we're focused also on is the PAC systems and also um, optimizing the workflow. We've been traveling to Kingston, Jamaica, but this year we actually added a new site, um, Montego Bay, where we went to Cornwall Regional Hospital, and we went to, we're going to Kingston Public Hospital, and now we're at the University Hospital of the West Indies. So we also want to touch a little bit on lecture sharing. So the residents here have been participating with us. Um, been sharing our lectures from Yale and seeing how it works out for them. So far, we've been getting good feedback, so we're very happy um, for the Yale residents who have been participating. What we've been doing is using screen sharing software, which is similar to what we're doing now, and we've been sharing morning conference and noon conference um, with the residents. The residents have been also signing waivers um, so the attendings are very happy um, to share their information with them. And we've been doing a QA and QI project, um, which we have presented at RSNA in collaboration with the residents here. Um, one of the residents, Melissa, has been very helpful with that. And we gave them pre-surveys and post-surveys just to evaluate how the lecture sharing has been working for them. So we're very happy to have um, begun that, but now we're extending the lecture sharing to Tanzania and we're also very excited about that venture as well. So we just want to let you know if you want to participate with this, feel free to reach out to us and the residents here are very happy to work with you. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much Fabian, thank you so much Kennedy and thank you so much uh, Crystal for that uh, illustration of some of the work that we're doing. But we would be remiss if we don't include other faculty who are actually doing similar work uh, in our department. Uh, some of you may or may not know. I uh, want to just present some slides from uh, Cicero, who is a pediatric radiologist. He couldn't be here today to kind of share this work, but he works very closely with the World Federation of Pediatric Imaging, 
which is a consortium uh, organization of uh, both national and supranational pediatric uh, radiology organizations. And they are kind of like have been at the forefront of kind of like pushing a uh, global uh, radiology. As you may or may not know, radiology is unfortunately a little bit behind in the whole like global health uh, movement. So medicine and surgery are probably like, way ahead of our specialty. And uh, within our specialty, pediatric radiology is probably the most advanced and sort of like, you know, using the current uh, tools to kind of like basically offer pediatric radiology expertise. And so how do they do that? They've already been doing video library, they're doing online teaching cases, they have open access educational articles on their website, they have peer review articles, and what I'm really excited about is some of the real-time uh, activities that they're doing, including on-site teaching and training. For a fact, I know that they have a pediatric fellowship now already established uh, in Ethiopia, and so we're modeling our intervention radiology fellowship and our neuroradiology fellowship along those sort of like efforts. But what also what uh, uh, Cicero does, uh, he does a teleradiology for many, many places uh, in, the, in the world. So this is just kind of like showing the screen. It's a very advanced sort of like, you know, teleradiology platform for sharing cases. And the case comes with like extensive uh, history uh, uh, provided and uh, like a specific question for that particular case. This case has actually come from Sierra Leone. Just last week, we had another case coming from like, I believe, Burma. And so these cases are being shared like not live. So if he has a question, he can also come and share that with us uh, within like neuroradiology. So it's been a really awesome collaborative uh, uh, work. And uh, uh, further to that, uh, WFPI is actually very active on social media as well. So this just kind of show the avenues and platforms for which radiology can begin to engage and kind of like really share uh, all, uh, all of our ex expertise. I mean, they're on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, and so forth. It's actually pretty, pretty, pretty uh, amazing. So uh, just to sort of like, you know, uh, uh, put this in perspective, this work is not possible without many, many, many collaborations. And we're very fortunate in that uh, both our colleagues here at Yale and our colleagues in Tanzania have been like super, super uh, uh, supportive of our efforts. I do want to acknowledge the uh, few of the people in uh, Tanzania who have been really instrumental. Uh, I do want to mention uh, uh, Professor Mseru, who is the executive director of Mwimbili National Hospital. And uh, just a little side note, so he is the one who actually invited me to go to Tanzania in the year 2014 and 2015, and I was going to help uh, Moi uh, with uh, building some of their uh, PACS uh, capacity. And at that time, he was actually the head of the Moi Orthopedic Institute, and since then he's been promoted uh, from retirement to come and lead the Muimbili uh, National Hospital. He's be, continued to be really a visionary in this effort. He's the one who's really supporting us and has been pushing us to kind of like do something about interventional radiology. Because time and time again, he sees patients who have just, let's say, an abdominal abscess who actually have to go for like an open uh, 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 washout instead of basically getting a catheter placed. I mean, I can't, there are many, many examples where we sort of take uh, uh, for granted uh, that uh, really interventional radiology is going to be a game changer. Not only in Tanzania, but in the region uh, uh, in general. We work closely with other like uh, uh, specialties, including pathology. And so there we're going to be basically helping them like start up a core a biopsy instead of just doing FNAs. Uh, we were there uh, last uh, October, November. They're doing many FNAs for what's obviously a stage four breast cancer. But when you do an FNA because of the lower sensitivity, basically it returns uh, not positive results. So there's a lot of work to be done uh, in that regard. In Moy, we have Mekris Mango, who actually spent some time with us here. Uh, in an observership in neuroradiology, and now he's back in Tanzania as the head of radiology department. He's very supportive. I want to mention Lulu Fundikira, who's the head of the department of radiology at Muhas, with actually training radiology residents. And again, she's been instrumental in basically boosting the number of trainees within radiology. So they basically went from something like 12 to 16, now to 25, which is really unbelievable, given that the faculty is flat. The only thing that's been changed is they've opened another hospital. So you're basically dividing the same staff to go staff another hospital and train double the number of radiology residents. So if I cannot emphasize the need uh, for helping with this training uh, uh, endeavor, I cannot say enough. Another person just to mention briefly is uh, Professor Janabi, who's a really visionary uh, head of the Cardiac Institute there, and they already are doing like cardiac angioplasty. So we are able to open vessels in the heart, but we've not been able to open vessels in the brain which as a neuroradiologist, I think uh, that needs to be a uh, uh, remedy. And uh, we're already working with our, our colleagues in Kenyatta Hospital. And again, just he, uh, J Dr. Jasper Muruka, he's actually not even like a fellowship trained uh, interventional radiology, but just having gained his own skills, he's able to come to Tanzania and begin to introduce some of the basic interventional radiologist techniques. And he's, I believe, going to be going to Singapore for his own 
Interventional Radiology uh, Fellowship. At our own home base at Yale New Haven Hospital in the department, really uh, many, many people have been uh, instrumental in supporting us, both in kind and also just like moral support. I want to mention Dr. Goodman, who actually was the uh, interim chair when I actually asked for the uh, leave of absence in 2014, 2015, and now is uh, 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 probably going to be our chair for the department. Is continue to be super supportive. Jamal Bukhari, Leslie Scout, who are really like, you know, visionaries within education. And so really that really fits very well with one of the strengths of Yale which is really a leading institution in our, in our teaching. Uh, we have many others here. I'm not going to go over each one, but the IT uh, folks, uh, the administrative folks, uh, they've been really like, you know, going above and beyond in helping us uh, towards this effort. And then lastly, I do want to mention Rad Aid, who actually have an awesome opportunity for technologists to actually fund technologists to go on these missions, which is really a critical component of buffing up uh, protocols or but actually one-on-one -on -one training of the technologists. So that's an avenue for if there's any technologist that within the Yale New Haven system who wants to spend two weeks or so in Tanzania, that whole trip is paid for. And I believe Crystal is now in Jamaica with some technologists have like full funding from Rad Aid. And uh, Rad Aid uh, is led by Dan Molura, who's also like a very visionary person within the uh, radio global health uh, community and so if people want to kind of get in Rad Aid is a very good place to sort of just get plugged in and have some very very exciting uh, projects uh, that it's worthwhile going to the website to kind of like you know get uh, plugged in now uh, uh, just to sort of like wrap this up uh, since we've been you know charting new territory and uh, really uh, uh, sharing this uh, uh, lecture live with some of our audience uh, online uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, we want to kind of take some questions, both from our live audience, if there are any questions from our residents or faculty, I'll be happy to answer that, and also uh, take any questions from online. So I will stop there. Um, and some of these uh, developing countries where they're training radiologists, the jobs are very tightly controlled, and when they're trained, there are no jobs for them. What's the situation in Tanzania? Is that an issue? Uh, so the question is uh, uh, whether uh, the, uh, when we are training all of these radiologists are actually going to find uh, 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 jobs uh, uh, in, in the government. So the situation in Tanzania is just basically we haven't really reached that problem yet <laughs> because the numbers are just so small and it just turns out that most of the equipment is in the major urban areas. So the need is really, really massive. So we have, I don't know, like less than 10 CT scanners and MRIs in the entire country and most of those scanners are concentrated in the major urban areas. So the challenge that we face right now is just basically that most of the radiologists are also going to be where the most uh, new technology is. So we haven't really reached that problem yet. But what I foresee right now uh, where we are is that the equipment is coming to a point where it's affordable for most countries. And, and so we have like 25 sort of like 25 to 30 jurisdictions within the country, meaning like major regions. In each one of these is going to have a CT scanner and an MRI scanner within the next 10 years. But we don't have the radiologist actually to sort of like, you know, staff that. So that's the sort of like wave that we want to have people who are well trained. When those machines arrive, we actually have the, the radiologist uh, to actually uh, do, do the cases. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we have a couple of questions from Facebook. So uh, Nuno Asmani is asking, is Tanzania supportive of your efforts and what more can they do to help? So that's a great uh, question, Lunda, uh, of, so whether Tanzania has been support, supportive. So I have been working mostly at the institutional level, so I've not really been working at the government level. I can say at Mwimbili, I could not have like better support, really all leaderships of all those institutes. And so we just mentioned, there are actually four separate autonomous institutes within that Mwimbili National Hospital campus. And each one of them has been like, you know, fully supportive of the efforts. And for us, we're actually very excited because again, the advantages of having a referral system is if it works at Mwimbili National Hospital, we actually get immediate buy-in from the government and some of these efforts can basically then go and spread elsewhere. So I think moving forward, what we would like to do is have an opportunity to, to share this experience with the government officials to kind of like explain the opportunities that arise there. And specifically, I want to mention the opportunity regarding like PACS. And uh, so one of the work that we did in uh, 2014, 2015 was to install a PACS uh, system at uh, Moy. And that was an open source PACS. And that saved almost $60,000 to $70,000 by replacing hard copy film. And those savings are actually ongoing. And this work has actually been published in the Journal of, of American College of Radiologists, available for people to actually you know, look up and actually share that work. And even if that alone was to be replicated, just the open source PACS was to be replicated across the country, you can only imagine how much we would gain in terms of like financial savings. 
Um, so if you want Vicky, Fabian is asking, do you plan to expand to other centers in Tanzania or only in Dar es Salaam? So we uh, don't have immediate plans to expand just yet. Uh, if we were to expand, we always want to expand where there's a residency training program. And currently in Tanzania, there's only one other residency training program. That's in KCMC, which is in the Moshi Kilimanjaro area. And uh, they have much fewer residents. So it's about like five residents or, or so a year. So we tend to basically base our efforts where we have the largest number of, uh, of radiology. Uh, tr uh, trainees. Uh, but again, you know, as we build up and we have more trained people graduating, we are going to encourage them to basically hopefully open their own residency training programs uh, in other centers. Uh, Emmanuel Ninja is asking that does MUAS currently have capabilities to perform ultrasound guided biopsies, for example, renal or liver for suspicious lesions, etc., or getting answers on causes of liver and renal failure? Okay, so Emmanuel Minja happens to be my brother. <laughs> so uh, does Muimbili have the capacity to do ultrasound-guided biopsies? So the answer is yes. However, the capacity they have is actually around FNA. So uh, again, uh, that's, that's basically, so they are able to do, uh, uh, and that's what the, uh, the pathologists are doing right now. So they'll do either ultrasound-guided or CT-guided FNA biopsies. And so FNA is the major method in which they're doing biopsies. And we, would, we would like to help replace that with our core biopsies. And that's what interventional radiology is going to add uh, uh, towards that effort. Any more questions for the live audience? Go ahead, Dr. Kirsch. Do we, okay, uh, question was, do we have any other countries in line? So really we're only limited by our own bandwidth in terms of like being able to do this effort. So our global outreach effort so far has been focused on Tanzania, Jamaica, and a little bit of work in Cameroon. Uh, uh, Kennedy has done like a needs assessment in Cameroon. So those are the three countries that we've been based in. But again, all of this work can be done pretty much anywhere, and we'd like to support any resident uh, who has the sort of infrastructure, because really the challenge that we have is having a faculty to supervise the resident. Because uh, when we're doing this elective, the, the elective is actually ACGME approved, and to have an ACGME approved uh, rotation, you actually require to have a on-site supervising faculty. So that's really the, the rate limiting step. So when you send a resident away who's actually on a resident salary and still under ACGME training, you have to provide equal sort of like uh, uh, academic supervision that would, they would have at their home uh, institution. So we've been able to accomplish that in Tanzania and that's why I have a, an attending goal for two weeks of the time. And we also have like uh, attendings from Tanzania who spend time at Yale and they sort of take over for the last two weeks once our residents are uh, uh, oriented. Go ahead. Uh, Samir Tamimi is asking, uh, what are some of the main obstacles to overcome with implementing? So what? Uh, so the question is, uh, what are the main obstacles for implementing? Uh, so I think right now it's more issue of bandwidth and a little bit of funding. Uh, so uh, funding has sort of been a challenge and sort of like being able to rapidly scale this up. So as uh, Fabian mentioned, our immediate funding need is probably going to be around uh, the interventional radiology program that we actually hope to launch maybe in uh, uh, late uh, 2018. So you know to get started, you know to basically have an attending goal for. Uh, once a month, of, uh, 10 times a year, we need $20,000 to kind of, you know, get the program of, off the ground. And we would want to have sort of like, you know, you know guaranteed 60000 to kind of get this uh, program off going and also in a sustainable fashion. Uh, but I believe uh, we have many other institutions that could sort of chip in. There's no reason why Yale should be the only one footing the $60,000 bill. And uh, we already have... Uh, uh, a potential collaboration with Dartmouth, who actually uh, two of their residents are going to spend time with us when we're there this coming February and March. So that's one model in which we can be, be able to overcome uh, this obstacle. But I think the obstacle is, the bigger obstacle is radiologists not realizing how accessible this opportunity is. So I really encourage uh, residents and fellows and uh, attendings to really kind of like, you know, look into how you can fit in at least a week or two and really uh, understand this opportunity. Because every time I go uh, uh, on these trips, you're sort of reminded like why you went into radiology and how impactful it can be. And uh, even if you don't have to go to Tanzania, sharing your lecture live, it's actually a whole different uh, ball game, and actually uh, Kennedy was mentioning some of the education opportunities in terms of using technology, so using Zoom, using Paul EV. So actually in those environments, it's actually you get to see the value of it, and uh, you can also bring those skills uh, back here. So I think it's just a matter of uh, uh, us understanding the opportunity within the global uh, uh, radiology community and sort of like sharing, 
sharing the expertise. And then, uh, Rinde McDermott, who's an ultrasound technologist here, is asking uh, whether any work is being done with ultrasounds and if there are any plans for advancing an ultrasound program. Uh, so we haven't uh, focused as much in ultrasound, and it's just more because of my background in neuroradiology, where I do deal more with CT scans and MRIs, but there is clearly need. Uh, uh, there is a group from uh, UCSF that's actually building a breast uh, uh, imaging program, and one of their main uh, push there, where uh, Dr. Amy Lee is leading that effort, is to basically start uh, uh, using ultrasound for uh, uh, doing uh, 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 biopsies and so forth. So within that, that's probably going to be the most immediate uh, application of uh, ultrasound uh, uh, technology and training. And uh, there was one more question online where they asked uh, how much training time uh, do faculty at Yale get? <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't remember who was asking. Uh, so I believe the associate professors, uh, they uh, every three years, I think they get uh, uh, six months off uh, to do a sabbatical, and uh, some of that is uh, is uh, compensated. Dr. Weinrib is shaking his head. But it's certainly more than the two weeks that, that the assistant professors uh, get. So with the triennial time, again, uh, you can go as, a, uh, as part of the sabbatical and, again, either contribute towards the teaching and maybe establish some of the research uh, that needs to be done. Again, imaging is very, very new in this uh, uh, environment and it really offers a lot of opportunity and really it's a time where whether you're here or whether you're in Tanzania, there's a lot that can be done with just available sort of technologies. All right. Um, so if there are no more questions, uh, I will... Uh, uh, try to end uh, the, the the session on time. It's been really really exciting to uh, to run this uh, session. It's really uh, new territory for us. Actually, sharing the session live, we have many many participants online, and uh, uh, we thank you for your time. We thank you for your attention. Really thank you for your interest. Uh, for any more info, uh, we have a URL there, but it's quite easy to just Google uh, Yale uh, uh, Radiology Global, and actually you're going to land on our website where we're going to continue sharing uh, most of this work. So without further ado, we're going to close the session and thank you so much uh, for your attention.